Today I talked to a husband and wife who are living in an RV with their three small children. They share the good and the bad and some inspiring wisdom about life on the road. Welcome to my channel. I'm Liz Amazing and these are exciting times to push past fear build confidence and live amazing. Well, you definitely need to push past fear if you're gonna pack up your small children and live in an RV while you're traveling the country. Well, I'm super excited to introduce you to Bethany and Brian who are doing just that. They very candidly share the good and the bad of living on the road with their small children and they share some really great life advice too. Well, I met Bethany and Brian back when I stayed in Yosemite a few months ago. They were my camping neighbors for a couple weeks, and then we met up again at another campground. So here are Bethany and Brian as they share their fascinating story. Well, thank you again for agreeing to having yeah, a little yeah. conversation. No so, um, so I was really curious about Bethany and Brian and their three kids to see them not on vacation, but actually living full time in their camper traveling the country so so let's talk about that and what led to that maybe we should back up to the the world travel so i suppose our traveling ambitions have been around for a long time and mm -hmm. they were realized last year uh where in, in april we took off um at the time we had three kids who i think were 10 6 and almost mm -hmm. 4 right spring of 2018 it's exactly or well two thousand. yeah spring of 2018 that's correct and then you were 29 and 35 roughly yeah yeah exactly right, right? Yeah. yeah yeah totally yeah, yeah. yeah. which <laughs> i don't which i don't ever remember telling you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. exactly yeah, yeah we we celebrated a lot of birthdays on the road yeah. <laughs> as soon as we left brian had a birthday in ireland charlie had a birthday in spain Lily had a birthday in New Zealand. I had a birthday in Bali. So it felt, uh, it was kind of neat to yeah. have those land, you know, those milestones. So what were you thinking? I mean, I think that's what I'm sure people are wondering. What were you thinking that you could just travel around the world with three kids, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so young and, and, and still be sane and safe? A yeah. lot of people said to us, you know, how, how could you take your three little kids around, you know, and do this, this and that. And we're all capable of it. We just thought, well, actually, we didn't really think much of no, it. No, no, we, we just sort of did it. it. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like, uh, you know, there were so many consequences of doing it, yeah. reasons not to do it. It's not like we figured out some recipe right. that mm -hmm. I could pass off to anybody and they'd be like, no, I can do it. Yeah. It's like it takes a lot of risk and you got to be okay to fail. And be okay with risk. Yeah, yeah. 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 totally. <laughs> and you just, you literally just, you do make it through. You get through, you know. Yeah, one you day at a time. You sleep on airport floors. You learn a new way to drive. You mm -hmm. learn to go on the other side of the street. You just... You yeah. manage, you do, you can. And most of the things you're afraid of actually will never really happen. They're just like chances. But I right. mean, you know, so like to mourn these things up front makes no sense. So we just sort of went and we're like, yeah. as problems will happen, we'll deal with them mm -hmm. and be upset when we need to be upset and not be upset when we don't. Like, mm -hmm. you know. What an adventure. Yeah, yeah. What so. an absolute yeah. adventure. But the best thing I can say about last year is it taught us that we're capable of anything. Yeah. And it doesn't matter yeah. big or small. We we did take our kids across the world and we didn't yeah. really think much of it. Backpacked. Across. Yeah, and, and yeah, we were very world. successful. And I think anyone who could follow in your footsteps would be also successful. For sure they would. You know, and that was, yeah. we took away is, and I think the kids too, we can do anything. Yeah. And the kids especially, they really took that to heart. I can climb a mountain, an actual mountain. Yeah. You know, right. like there were times where they will think back, you remember that time where we, when we climbed so high, we touched the snow, oh, yeah. you know, like wow. really cool moments like that, that even yeah. they were that like, I can't do it, I can't do it. And you're like, yes, you can. You just put one foot in front of the other, literally. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes figuratively, when you are getting on an airplane, you just put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. You get the air, you get there, you get your car. Yeah. Right. You get on the public transportation, even though it scares you, like, it scares you to death. Mm -hmm. You just put one foot in front of the other. And then by the time you go to bed at the night, you're like, oh, I'm in a new country. And I did public transportation for the first time. And right. I managed to get through, like, a grocery store and ask somebody, hey, where, where's the fish, you know, in their own language or whatever. And yeah. You just, you just do. So, yeah. 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 So yeah. then you came home and then what happened that led to this uh, living in a travel trailer? 
Well, I think actually the concept of it sort of existed a little bit while we were traveling. Um, you know, Bethany was the one who first started thinking about the driving this force. is a potential, <laughs> yeah, yeah, lifestyle. Um, you yeah. know, really took an interest in it. And my initial thoughts were like, "That's crazy," a little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. But she kept on wearing me down. You know, <laughs> no, yeah. Well, and, that's the beautiful thing about social media is you can connect with people living so many different dreams. Mm-hmm. So here we were stuck in our town where there really is only one dream, and that's you go to work, you put your kids through school you retire and then that's it, you know? So being able to connect with other people online really just validated the fact that I had a different dream and that was okay because other people do other things. And Mm -hmm. again, that's okay. We all want different things. So for Brian, I think he didn't have that connection that I had, so mm-hmm. it was more yeah. difficult for him to I, like envision secondhand it. exposure to it a bit. Yeah, yeah. so but you, know, you were open to it. Absolutely, yeah. for sure. I never shut it down or anything like that. I mean, yeah. you know, we had this opening, and it just sort of was like, let's do it. Like yeah. everything's just yeah. fallen in place, and let's hit the road. So we did. Like we made the decision and actually left. I'd say like, well, in a month. Yeah, basically, probably. we. You know, the the dream was always to you know live this way somehow we just weren't really sure how it would materialize for us Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we came home with a lot of faith and a lot of hope and you know uh, it like brian said we didn't have a big plan it just sort of landed on our lap and Mm -hmm. we were like okay let's do it let's go for it you know this is the dream so let's make it happen and family and friends thought you were crazy yeah (laughs) Yeah, a a little bit i mean although keep in mind we had just returned from a a world trip (laughs) so they're like okay yeah they're like whatever yeah yeah Yeah. exactly see you later (laughs) yeah for sure well and and we're canadian and nobody in canada really does this so it's it's very it's a new concept for us i think in the states it's more it's more common you know Mm -hmm. and even to homeschool your kids it's far more common so we were already going against the grain a bit Mm-hmm. So it was nice when we crossed the border and started to meet other like-minded people. For and, sure. You know, yeah. connect and, and that felt really, you know, validating and good. You know, there's so many questions meeting you guys that just went through my head. You know, like when you think of raising young kids in a regular house, well, you have family and friends and babysitters. Yeah. You have none of that. No. So you're a full-time parent all the time yeah you know how do you not get burned out how do you not get burned out of parenting all Mm -hmm. the time yeah i mean not that we do get burnout sometimes Mm -hmm. uh fortunately it's not that often that it happens at the same time you know usually one of us has our act together when the other one melts down and often it's me who melts down to be fair the um you know so we switch off well that way i think although it's not that often that we have to do it Mm -hmm. i mean it's not everything's always like we're not constantly trying to teach and discipline form the kids Uh, you know like the objective is to have friendships with them and then when there's things that we feel we need to interject on we do so Mm -hmm. i don't feel like we're constantly parenting sometimes it feels like we're just hanging out with our buddies okay and i think brian hit the nail on the head with the fact that i think we feel like they're more our friends than you know this parent child you know um, yeah we don't we, have this vast space between us of yeah. like, you're not coming down authoritarian no, no and i, I feel yeah. like they teach us more than we teach them you know it's it's a really we have a really nice relationship with them you're so, honoring and respecting yeah and so yeah. they are and i can see that with the kids i can definitely see that you know they're they're not beaten down or yeah. Like yeah 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 but it just seems like you have such a big you know responsibility versus living in a yeah. home in a neighborhood because you're not only 100% parenting but you're doing homeschooling yeah. mm-hmm. too so you're so you're yeah. replacing the school you're replacing you know maybe your family that would help watch the kids i mean you're doing it mm-hmm. all yeah but you know back home there wasn't a lot of say sometimes with how our children were raised mm-hmm. so as much as we got to ship them off to school and get a 6 hour break we you know, other people were raising our kids. Right. And at the end of the day, that's what really bothered us. Mm-hmm. I, I love having the break from them, but I don't like... It came at a cost. Yeah, it yeah. did. It, it really did. They were coming home with things and, you know, it. I, I want to be in charge of how my kids are, you know, raised and who they're going to become when they're older. Right. Where right. we really have that control now to, you know, nurture 
them in ways that they should be or you know or mm -hmm. anything like that yeah and to cultivate like their particular and individual interests as well right mm -hmm. like you know if one's excelling at math and science it's you know in the school it's almost like they just don't pay attention to that and then they just work on you in the areas that you're struggling right and i mean that's great for being well-rounded and stuff like that but like you know spending the time to like hunter in particular is really great with science and math and stuff so we do extra work in those areas to help really right, you know we keep him up in that. the english and yeah. the you mm -hmm. know social studies and the stuff he doesn't enjoy but you know mm -hmm. only to the point that he has to be you right, know and but then you're, yeah but you're yeah. honoring that he's excelling in this and mm -hmm. uh, exactly go for it yeah and you don't really get that in school unless you're lucky enough that your kid gets noticed and gets put into enrichment for something but right. i mean you know he's pretty right. quiet yeah by nature so yeah. he doesn't stand out in the classroom that much yeah. what is the downside what what are the what are the challenges <laughs> well there's space yeah mm -hmm. there's no space the kids all share basically like a few square feet of mm -hmm. for a room they're always you know they're <laughs> yeah you, they basically you, you live in a chest to... of drawers <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, little... you know there's really honestly not a lot of cons to this lifestyle it you know you do miss your your friends and your family yeah you know we we're leaving here, our current campground, in a few days, so we're already preparing ourselves to have to say goodbye to people right. that we've made real deep connections with, yeah. and that that's a struggle. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there is no perfect scenario. You know, there's always going to be bad. There's going to be good, mm -hmm. and the good far outweighs the bad in this lifestyle. It's very, you know, it's very inspiring. Yeah. So to yeah. be able to, you know, walk out your door and to always have something new that you can learn from and. Well, new people. I I think there's there's probably a lot of downfalls. Like I mean, if we were to oh, really okay, so now we're into the like yeah, no, no. But if we were to break it down, like I mean, there's lots of things that if you were to just say it aloud, right, you'd be right. like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound that great. This lifestyle is not for everyone. But you know? yeah, but I think the the positive of it is that it's on your terms and on your schedule. Mm -hmm. Like I had a realization like at one of the first campgrounds we stayed at in Leavenworth when we were getting organized to go basically when we were going on this trip we had this big debate whether or not we were going to bring our bikes mm -hmm. um and how much we need them and they obviously take up space and we didn't have right. a great storage solution for them when driving so I like built a bike rack for the back of the thing and anyhow yeah. but um I absolutely fundamentally hated taking these things off and putting right, them back on right, again right. it was just so much work and you have to do it in a particular manner to get mm -hmm. them all to yeah, fit yeah it's a lot of bikes yeah it's a lot of bikes exactly <laughs> so I was doing it at Leavenworth and I just had this realization that I don't need to do this quickly like there's no reason for me to do this there's in a no hurry nobody's hurry. waiting for me to have it done or expecting mm -hmm, for me to right. report back that the bikes were on so I just did it at my leisure it took an hour to do it and the fact yeah. that I had the luxury yeah. to do that and I realized that I was like I think the secret to life is like doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you don't have to do it on a strict schedule yeah. anything is manageable I love that. I yeah. mean, that's a that's a big kernel of wisdom right there, yeah. and I can relate because before living this life, I could feel that too, where you're always going from one activity to another yeah. and hurrying and, and really paying attention to your watch. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I mean, there's less source, of that now. That's a great source of anxiety for so many people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that expectation to get something done at this time, and yeah, you know what we've really gotten out of this trip so far is just that time is something that we have and that feels really liberating yeah it so, does you know if it takes him an hour to put the bikes on or right he was taking the decals off the other day and everyone kept coming up saying you know if you had a heat gun or did this or that fast it would be so much faster yeah and i right, just right. was like i'm not in any particular hurry to have it done like i'm not yeah. looking for the fastest way to do this right now i'm just yeah, enjoying just it, doing, doing it. it yeah one of the positives about living you know the trailer life or life on the road is that you do have a sense of community in the way that you're spending time with like-minded people mm -hmm. but there also isn't a lot of expectations on each other either like you have if you're in a stationary community right because as that happens people depend on expectations and you know you know sort of plans for you you know like and mm -hmm. sometimes you waste a lot of time doing things that you don't even feel would be is worthy work that you right. don't even like see right. the point in but you have to do it to meet sort of the expectations, expectations of the people around you yeah right. exactly where you don't have that at all yeah doing this like i mean at all you know yeah so how do you keep your marriage strong when you know the kids are around all the well, time that was an assumption <laughs> that was an assumption you guys are grinning you guys are grinning oh yeah, yeah. uh, okay yeah 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 i think we just sort of we manage to, you know, like a lot of the same things and we have a lot of, we just, ha we have a lot of fun together, the two of yeah, us. Yeah, I can see so, that. So, you know, it's, yeah. there's not a lot of like, 
pressure there thankfully you know we're mm-hmm. and that's I think that's the secret to life too is just to have you know you gotta have fun even yeah. with your kids right right that's part of it you, you can't always take yourself so seriously well and we do still have disagreements but if we are it's usually as a result of something that actually needs to be addressing like you know where I think back in our old life you know I, uh, when selling real estate and stuff, sometimes you got to deal with some real issues and, you know, right. and you have problems with people that you just wish you weren't dealing with and they burn you out. Right. And then you go home to your spouse who's like literally just like minding her own business and then mm-hmm. you get frustrated with her about something that isn't really her fault. Like, so mm-hmm. when you eliminate those sort of moments of your day, then you don't have, you know, as many unnecessary breakdowns and stuff because you're not getting worn out by everything. By you life. And yeah. The, mm-hmm. the treadmill of life of working and just, you know, so it sounds like that the biggest takeaway that you guys, or the biggest draw maybe for this life is mm-hmm. the stress, getting rid of stress. Yeah, for sure. Living yeah. minimally was a huge part of it too. It's like, okay, let's reduce our Living below requirements. Yeah, I think we realized last year when we, um, we only took our backpacks across on our trip yeah. that I've never, been, I've never been more free than mm-hmm. having, with having less. Yeah. So that was a huge takeaway last year is we we realized we didn't need much space. So the t- the little trailer, the few articles of clothing, you know, mm-hmm. we felt happier with that and more free. You know, we certainly don't have a lot of money, but we just use it more wisely. And st- and I feel like a millionaire, you know. Like yeah. I, and then you do you some know. boondocking. And yeah, yep. we do a lot of dry camping. Mm-hmm. Um, Usually again, in a state forest or something too, yeah. right? So. Yeah. The big draw with uh, dry camping also for us is we want to be more mindful of our, our carbon footprint. Mm-hmm. We want to live, you know, in harmony with the earth because yeah. I think the way that we are living and with the excess, we're just burning it out and we're taking so much. And and even last year, personally, I felt pretty guilty with the amount of flights we went on. Mm-hmm. So this year, to try to, like, <laughs> cut, <laughs> cut back. Settling it. We yeah. live yeah. off solar and, you know, right. and everything like that. and. And just really peacefully with the earth. And I think it's really cool to teach your children, you know, that that excess and how we use too much and to really teach them that what we have is enough and let's not take more. You know, I I love that they're growing up in a life where they get to spend all day outside every day. Right. That is so awesome. So healthy. Yeah. So healthy. You know, like I think back home. We've got kids who like won't get off their devices They're or something on the like this. Time. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I like. I'm proud to say that our kids like we. If ever we need a break, it's like okay, go play a game we, like, for twenty minutes. We like force them to be on their devices. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, they yeah, have yeah. no desire. Exactly. I think it's yeah. really cool to see that. To them, it's far more interesting to you know make garbage into a toy outside or yeah. like play outside. Yeah. And that is you know, so no, that's, that's a true cool thing. Yeah. There's definitely hard days, you know, I think even today, because we're saying goodbye to everyone, there's days where you miss your family at home, your friends, you know, there's times where you feel like, in a sense, you're you're living selfishly, you're living just for you and just for your kids, and that comes at a cost too. You wish you could be home, you wish you could Yeah, because help your grandparents family. are missing out on seeing yeah. For sure. That's yeah. that's the that's one that's hard. that's the hook, right? Like yeah. that's the issue is that yeah. you don't have that sort of like extended family. And we've got pretty close relationships with like our parents and um mm, right. you know, and in particular like You've um, taken the grandkids away. Yeah. 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 Well and there's cousin relationships and stuff right. too in the community, yeah. right? You know, of course as parents and anybody really you always question are you doing the right thing Mm -hmm. you know am I giving my kids the best life and that's that is certainly something that you have to live with and go to bed with right yeah and we're not convinced like I I don't know yet what the answer to that is what you know yeah (laughs) yeah for sure like it's it's, a leap of faith yeah Yeah. yeah, for sure um yeah I know that I feel very peaceful Mm -hmm. in my life right now and I would Mm -hmm. say that's probably true with all of us Mm -hmm. which is an indicator of a good choice oh yeah the kids just seem amazing yeah they're very very content very peaceful Mm -hmm. so I guess from that perspective yeah hopefully we're doing that okay (laughs) for sure but definitely you do uh you feel you feel bad because I think I said um you know the the big key word is you do feel like you're living selfishly you know, you're you're putting everyone else's happiness kind of the grandparents. I mean, they miss yeah. the kids so much. Sure. Yeah. On hold because you're saying, you know, my happiness is important too. 
my kids' happiness is important, so I'm going to focus on that right now. And hopefully, you know. yeah. And if there's some consequences to other people, so be it a bit. And that does sound selfish I know, to that's perspective, hard. but it's mm-hmm. true. And I think all but. people should actually, more people should do that mm-hmm. because I think the more people who did, the more happy people there would be in the world, and the more happy people we there are in the world, the better yeah. place it will right. probably be. Exactly. And you know, so it's like to say that you should put out the fire inside of yourself to serve the fire in someone else. I don't think is necessarily exactly. like a good move for anybody yeah, at the exactly. end of the day it you know? is about creating happy people yeah for sure yeah. you know yeah i guess another thing like to touch on is like financially it mm-hmm. can be difficult at times right because mm-hmm. some people have because you're not retired no no and nor no. am i working on the road like i don't have an online business that i'm spending yeah. you know like you know we've created some av- like revenue streams right. you know s- somewhat passively um mm-hmm. that serves us but it but it's limited you know and so when you're living in a community and have a full-time job you can just sort of just frivolously buy stuff and just be like oh well i'll just make more money you know like and deal with it that way whereas Mm -hmm. you only sort of have so much coming in so it's a daily question of is this worth it like you know and going out like for lunch because sometimes you want to like go for lunch and you know and do stuff like that but you just can't because that'll catch up to you you only have so much and again everyone's in a different position i know a lot of people do work on the road and that's great Mm -hmm. uh we don't so that makes it you know we have to we have to learn to live with less and Mm -hmm. you know and make that that decision every day if it's either this or that Mm -hmm. so yeah and that's why I think everybody doesn't do it. You know, we're always like, why doesn't everybody live like this? And that's why, because not everybody's comfortable right. having to constantly make financial sacrifices. Yeah, because you're walking on a, on a tight wire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the gift in that is that you're fully present for each other and the kids. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. you're not buried in the computer trying to make money. Or, right. No, yeah. for sure. And um, money's not responsible for provi- providing me most of my joy either, which right. it typically is for most people, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm literally happiest to just be outside not even thinking about the counting mm-hmm. right you know right yeah yeah we got a roof over our heads we've got food on the table yeah mm-hmm. you know and the rest kind of does manage to handle itself so what more do you need what sage advice do you have about living in an rv share in the comments and if you liked this video you'll love the next one about the pros and cons of solo rv life i'll see you in the next video